So, welcome everyone to the next to the first seminar of a a probability and stochastic process from in USP from 2021. And uh, today we have Yevgeny Kovchegov <laughs> from uh, Oregon State University. And actually, uh, he knows our department. So, as far as I no, you have been here in 2019, right? As a researcher, invitation, uh, visitor, researcher, right? Working with. Actually, I visited uh, 2015, 2017, and 2019, uh, 2018 wow. through 2019. <laughs> so. Why you even speak Portuguese? <laughs> so welcome back, at least virtually, to our department, and uh, thank you very much to. Uh, accepting the invitation. Well, I'm I'm glad uh, to be back to uh, you know at um, USP um, at least virtually. I hope to you know visit uh, in person at least you know hopefully in the near future. And um, so what I'm going to talk about is our recent uh, work uh, in collaboration with. Uh, Ilya Zalapin, but also part of it uh, is uh, now uh, being done with, in collaboration with my uh, student Guo Cheng Su at Oregon State University. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about invariant Galton Watson measures. This is a class of measures that we show is invariant under certain. Um, uh, operation on trees uh, called pruning but it is also um, turns out to be invariant on you know a big class of this uh, operations so uh, before we move on with uh, the statement of the problem and the statement of the main results i would like to identify the space we are working in uh, at least most of the talk will be in the space of trees, uh, T, he denoted here by T. So this is space of finite, unlabeled, rooted, uh, reduced trees. So let me explain these terms. First of all, uh, rooted means each tree has a root, root vertex. And uh, having root vertex, um, uh, uh, induces the orientation up and down right away from the root is up uh, towards the root is down uh, now what is reduced uh, reduced is um, that uh, every degree two vertex is eliminated uh, by serious reduction so what what is serious reduction uh, a serious reduction is where you take every. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't. I just use this this mouse to as a pointer. So you take every um, vertex of degree two and uh, merge the adjacent edges into one. So practically you remove them, and so this all becomes just one edge. And same thing here. And same thing here. This is especially handy uh, when you have actually edge lengths, uh, which we will introduce uh, in the like later part of the talk. And when you have edge lengths, then uh, really uh, the vertices uh, can be considered as points on the metric space because uh, three, uh, metric three is the metric space, uh, and then. Um, uh, that vertex can signify uh, a splitting, right? A point of branching, or a, a root, or a leaf vertex. But everything is be in between. Uh, uh, doesn't matter. It uh, it just points on on the tree. So is this clear? What 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 the reduced rooted tree is? Do you have any questions? Okay, well, I, I suppose it's clear. Um, so now uh, our space also contains empty tree. 
an empty tree is the one uh, consisting of only a, a root vertex, which we denote by rho. Uh, and finally, uh, we here we restrict ourselves to the subspace of these trees of rooted reduced trees. Uh, well, um, the, the subspace denoted this way uh, is it consists of trees where the root vertex has at most one offspring. That is, you have a stem edge, the stem edge that uh, connects the root vertex to uh, at most one descendant, right? If, if there is any, if it's not an empty tree. Okay, so that's, that's, that's our space of trees. Now, uh, next, uh, we introduce the operation of Horton pruning. Uh, so, uh, operation of Horton pruning takes trees in the space uh, T stem and uh, and maps them into trees um, in the space T stem according to the following uh, procedure. So, we look at all the leaves of a tree and uh, look at uh, leaf edges, the edges that uh, connect the leaf vertex to uh, the parent, and then remove all the leaf edges, right? So we remove, uh, here we color coded uh, leaf edges black. So we remove all the leaves, and then everything is done mode series reduction. So after we remove leaf, say this, this uh, vertex will become degree, become degree two. So uh, then we do series reduction. It is being merged uh, into just one big edge. Same thing with other uh, degree two vertices. So uh, Horton pruning is essentially uh, removing leaves followed by serious reduction. And so if we do Horton pruning of the tree T here, we remove the leaves and then these green segments, of which were uh, um, made out of uh, multiple edges oftentimes, are becoming now the new leaves right, in the tree R of T. Now, what, what we can do is we can repeat the operation we can uh, remove the leaves of the trees that we obtained, right, and uh, followed by serious reduction. In other words, we can do one more pruning, and that's what we're going to get. And then we can do one more pruning, and we end up with uh, a tree that consists of one edge connecting uh, the root uh, to a descendant a vertex. And finally, we do uh, one last pruning and we are down to the empty tree consisting of the root, okay? Then it took us four Horton prunings to uh, prune uh, the whole tree to, to the empty tree. So uh, the Horton stroller order of the tree is defined as the minimal number of prunings it takes uh, for the tree uh, to become uh, an empty tree. Okay, uh, so um, let's see. Uh, what you also observe is that uh, we color coded black the segments, uh, in this case, the leaves that, uh, that, that disappear after the first pruning. We color coded green the uh, segments uh, you can say branches uh, that disappear after the second pruning. Blue uh, branches disappearing after uh, third pruning and uh, finally red branches disappearing af after the fourth pruning. So it, that installs the hierarchy on different parts of trees. So uh, leaves colored black are Horton order one segments of the tree or Horton stroller order one. Uh, then uh, the green uh, branches are order two segments of the uh, of the tree. 
blue is order three and finally red is order uh, four so actually this is how um the rivers uh, uh are determined in hydrology so say uh, how do we know that uh, when uh, missouri meets uh, mississippi that it's missouri uh, merging into mississippi and not the vice versa well because if you do this you'll see that uh, um, that uh, according to horton ordering uh, scheme uh, mississippi has higher order than uh, missouri so that means that you know that, uh, say, this is Missouri blue and this is order three, and then Mississippi is uh, uh, red order four, so Missouri mi merges into Mississippi and not vice versa. Uh, so same, uh, but, but, but actually for, for, for those rivers, it's like order 10 merging into order 11. Uh, so, so this is the operation of Horton pruning uh, that we will consider and this is um, uh, how you um, determine uh, the hierarchy of different segments of the tree. Uh, now <clears throat> here two, two more examples of order four trees. Each one uh, disappears exactly after four prunings and again color coding uh, black order one, green order two, blue order three, and uh, red order four. Okay, so there are lots of self similarities uh, uh, and self uh, affinities that are found in multiple uh, tree measures, right? Measures inducing different trees. And we're going to talk about very particular one uh, today. So, uh, we're going to talk about a Horton prune invariance. Uh, let's see. Um, so, uh, consider a measure mu that induces trees in, uh, well, in our case, we want uh, uh, trees with stem. Uh, well, what could be those measures mu? Uh, that could be, say, a branching process, right? Well, that, uh, if it's a subcritical or critical branching process, it, it guarantees to produce a finite tree, right? Uh, which uh, tracks the dynamics of branching. What, uh, if you go back in time, you could look at the coalescent processes, for example. Any kind of merger or annihilation dynamics uh, can be described by a tree. So, uh, or level set three of uh, a random type, uh, like a random uh, function, right? Um, that that also uh, gives us a measure on trees. So we look at the measures like branching processes, measures that uh, induce an empty tree with probability zero. So if you do a branching process, meaningful branching process, that is ha that has non-zero probability of branching then definitely um, um, the um, uh, well actually if it no if you do a branching process the stand, a standard way a, a, any branching process as long as it's subcritical or critical you start with a parent which produces one offspring and that offspring starts uh, branching so, um, uh, so the progeny is always there, but also there is always one child of the progeny uh, vertex. So it's easy to imagine uh, trees that you can build this way, um, so that uh, probability of an empty tree that consists of just the root is uh, non-existent. Now let's. Uh, new be a push forward measure uh, obtained from a measure mu by uh, applying Horton pruning. So what is push forward measure? Well, um, it's uh, when you let new to be mu of R, R inverse of 
of of chi. That is, uh, how do you in uh, how does measure new work? You uh, sample a three t uh, with measure mu, and then you prune it once, and the obtained uh, three is uh, sampled with measure new, right? So uh, and now let's look at the push forward measure mu and then condition on non empty tree. So we, we, we exclude all the uh, empty trees uh, from the ones that we can induce uh, uh, by measure new. And then we say that uh, the measure mu is Horton prune invariant or invariant under Horton pruning if the pu push forward measure condition on the tree being non empty uh, is the same as the original measure mu. Now, I don't know, I have a question. Do I have a drawing tool here? Because I don't, I know how it works on uh, Zoom, I don't know how it works uh, here. It's a good question. Uh, there's something it's called uh, no uh, jam board. Yeah. Do you have one? Because I was about to draw a forest and prune it. <laughs> but uh, maybe it doesn't have to be. Um, uh, just this, the, the 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 whole the whole idea is uh, imagine you induce. Uh, an infinite forest of trees using measure mu, right? And then uh, this forest may actually include trees that consist of just one edge, for example, right? Or trees that uh, look like Y or more complicated trees. And then imagine uh, you uh, prune that forest. Each tree is pruned exactly once. So the trees that consist of one edge disappear because they become just uh, trees that consist of the root and as we condition on looking at the trees that are non-empty they disappear they just they just cut out they're no longer part of the forest and then if you look at the surviving trees and you'll see that the frequency of different trees that you obtain the same this way is exactly the same as the frequency in the original forest induced by the measure mill that's what it means to be a Horton prune invariant. Okay. Now, uh, beside in invariance, uh, there are other important uh, properties. One of them is attractors. So, what if I induce, I, I induce, um, I start with some other measures that may not be Horton prune invariant, say rho zero. I induce uh, a forest of of trees with this rho zero. And then I I, um, I start pruning uh, them consecutively. I'll, pr I'll prune all the trees once, some will disappear and it's fine, but many will survive. I will prune it twice, I'll prune it uh, k times, right, obtaining uh, rho sub k. And then I, I each time I look at the frequency of different trees, right? So I look at the new measure on, on, on non-empty trees. And then uh, a, a, a measure raw star is an attractor if um, as you let k go to infinity, uh, raw sub k, so if you keep pruning and pruning and pruning, raw sub k converges to raw star. Of course, a tractor uh, has to be a Horton prune invariant measure on trees. But, um, um, but uh, then uh, being an attractor is more than just being, uh, you know, invariant. It also, uh, it, it should have uh, a, a basin of att uh, attraction. There should be a class of measures that, um, uh, uh, that are non-invariant, but as you keep pruning, they will converge to, to, to that one, right? Um, a meaningful class of measures, of course. So we want to find and classify attractors uh, in uh, branching processes, in coalescent processes, in 
all kind of uh, um, trees built by partition or uh, coagulation dynamics or annihilation dynamics for that matter. Right, and so there are two objectives. Uh, one, finding and classifying Horton prune and gradient tree measures. And the other objective is finding and classifying all the attractors. Okay. Or as many as possible. Um, so, can I ask yeah. uh, some question, please? Um, um, Go ahead. Uh, uh, yes, you use, uh, uh, to, in order to construct a measure mu, mu uh, you use uh, uh, branching um, ideas. Yeah. Yes, but, uh, for example, I take all, uh, for any tree, uh, I know that uh, the set of all such trees is a countable set. And probably I yeah. I, I, wow. give, I give some, I distribute some weights, uh, abstract weights for any, uh, for any, for any uh, uh, tree. And uh, then I define such, uh, such uh, function, it's, it's possible, yes, in an abstract way to construct these measures. Well, hold on. Uh, branching process is a measure, right? No, no. Branching process, yes, but uh, branching process uh, gives uh, gives me one way to construct the measure me. Yeah. One so, way. Uh, so, but uh, I can uh, use another way to construct uh, to construct a measure on trees. Yeah, like for example, you can uh, toss a coin, right? Um, and say uh, use geometric uh, random variable with probability one half to select the number of leaves in the tree and then uh, perform one of your favorite coalescent processes. Yes, for example. So, or for something. example, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's, so it means that I can, uh, 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 it's an abstract measure. It's not exactly the branching measure, uh, uh, measure yeah. that I should consider. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm starting with just general problem, right? General. Yes, uh -huh. which which we approach and and we 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 we, we published like, like a year ago, uh, 2020. We published a 200 something page uh, survey in probability surveys where we we looked at various other invariances. But in this talk, I'll talk only about branching processes. O only about Galton Watson measures. Uh, okay, hear me. But I should see as way beyond generated by by only by galton watson process okay yeah in this so so this this slide is still not talking about galton watson it's still talking about you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the next slide you say okay now let's look at galton watson measures mm -hmm. yeah. okay good question all right well uh thank you uh, uh, does anyone else have questions all right let's move on then uh and I'll make sure to give you opportunity to ask questions uh, as we go. So uh, consider a Galton-Watson uh, measure uh, with uh, branching probabilities uh, Q sub K, right? So, uh, so each uh, individual in any generation produces K offsprings with probability Q sub K. Now, we make Q1 equal to zero. Uh, you sh probably already know why, because we want to produce, um, um, produce uh, uh, a reduced tree, right? Uh, if, 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 if we have exactly one uh, branching into one individual, then it's almost the same as just uh, never branching, right? Uh, because a, a one individual dies out and continued exactly by one uh, descendant edge. So it's just one edge. From uh, the perspective of topology of the tree, it doesn't matter. So even if we were to start with Q1 not equal to zero, we can always uh, remove Q1 and divide all the probabilities by one minus Q1. Okay. So we are looking at uh, Galton Watson measure uh, inducing reduced trees with stem, of course, because we start with one progeny we, and with one exactly one descendant that then branches according to Q sub K. We want it to be a finite trees, so we are looking at a subcritical case. And the, for a long time, the following theorem was the only proven result uh, of uh, invariance. 
an attractor in uh, in all of the theory that after that after after that after 2000 branched out and was um, you know in all kind of direction so uh the the theorem uh is due to bird by Meyer and Wien was published in 2000 so it says first of all it makes a very strong assumption assume finite second moment okay then it says uh under this assumption the, of all the galton watson measures uh the only uh horton prune and variant one will be the critical binary galton watson process that is a process uh, or measure where q0 is the same as q2 is equal to one half so where uh, each time you is a produce two offsprings or no offsprings okay uh but that's true on the assumption of the finite second moment and then if you assume uh the the, se the second statement was about attractor property so if you assume finite branching the theorem was saying that uh then um as you keep pruning, if you if you be pruning uh, repetitively, then uh, uh, the measures, the push forward measures, will converge to measure uh, attractor measure rho star, and that rho star, uh, in that case, will will always be the critical binary Galton Watson uh, measure. And finally, uh, they completely resolve the subcritical case. If um, if sub if the measure you started with was subcritical and you start um, uh, pruning on and on and on, then uh, there is only one uh, attractor, and that attractor will be the measure uh, which uh, which produces um, just um, one edge. So uh, 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 a progeny, root vertex, and one. <laughs> one child which yields no offsprings because q0 is equal to one so meaning if you start with subcritical case and then you start pruning right or you start with um, a whole forest of trees that you were induced were induced by that subcritical measure you start pruning them then the limit will uh, in the limit you will be only getting uh trees that consist of just one edge right and no trees right but you don't count empty trees all right so uh so here we extend this result we discover the whole class of invariant measures and show their attractor uh attractors for a uh, whole you know for, for for large number of um critical um critical measures that are not uh prune invariant so we, we essentially we under certain um, regularity assumption we completely solve this uh, resolve this question removing uh, the assumption of finite branching for attractors and finite second moment for uh, the uh, Horton prune invariant measures. All right. So let me before stating the result, uh, let me tell you what it is based upon. So what it is based upon is the following observation, which uh, we, uh, that's where our investigation began. Uh, so if you um, look at the generator of your Galton Watson measure, Q of Z, and uh, let's pi or j denote the probability that the tree generated by your measure has order j. Horton Stroller order J. And then sigma J will be the pro probability that the tree induced by, by uh, your Galton Watson measure uh, yield, uh, yields, um, so the tree induced by your Galton Watson measure has order J or smaller, right? But then apparently, sigma sub J can be uh expressed as 
uh, a composite of the uh, 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 same function j times, uh, where you plug in z equal to zero, and that uh, function s of z is q of z minus z times q prime divided by one minus q prime of z. So it, it never happened to us that we would have such a nice uh, expression of uh, pruning j times, right? Uh, so sigma sub j says that the tree is of order j. That means that if you if you if you prune j times, uh, um, uh, then uh, it will disappear. It will become an empty tree. And then here pruning is essentially expressed as the composition of functions for, of course, when, uh, for uh, an expression of uh, uh, some value. And that give, gave us a tool to to do. Uh, a lot of results, uh, invariance and attractive results. So if, we, uh, well, maybe I'll return to this picture later because I want to cover everything that I, I have in the plans for you. So first, let me tell you of what our regularity assumption will be. Our regularity assumption is the existence of the derivative of this function S at one. Right, so this is S of Z. Uh, you, do, you do know that the numerator and denominator are zeros there. So you do have to, uh, as, as, you, as you let Z equal to one, right? Because you're dealing with a critical tree. So you have one minus one divided by one minus one. So definitely you don't know how the, fu the function S of Z behaves around one and that is really uh, determining a lot of things. So, if you look at this assumption, assumption says that the derivative uh, of the function s of x at one exists. Right. Um, so the derivative is even a harder formula involving q's and. Um, uh, then um, you can express one minus that derivative as that limit. So you, in other words, the assumption says that this limit exists. And so again, I mean, this is zero over zero limit. And uh, you don't know uh, if, if, you know, because there are cases where it doesn't exist, uh, where you can e find easily. So how general is this assumption? This assumption uh, is general uh, in the following case. Uh, it works uh, um, when trees are subcritical. Well, when uh, trees are subcritical, then uh, S prime of one is equal to zero. The limit exists. Now, if uh, the second uh, moment is finite, uh, the limit exists and equal to one half. Now, more interestingly, uh, there is a lemma which uh, is, a, is a good replication of assumption one. It's, it's a little less general than assumption one, but it's easier to write. So if, if you're dealing with now infinite second moment, because for finite second moment, everything is known. Uh, and then uh, if this limit, where x is the number of x is a random variable uh, representing, say, a gen generic number of offsprings as a gen generic random variable uh, distributed according to q sub k. Then, if this limit of k over expectation of x condition on x greater or equals than k, if this limit exists, then the assumption holds, and s prime of one is equal to that limit. And this limit uh, can be written as the limit of this uh, fraction of sums, right? Uh, apparently, this lemma helps us a lot because then uh, you can show that a lot of a lot of uh, uh, trees, a lot of tree measures satisfy uh, assumption one because they satisfy the existence of the limit in the lemma. For example, if we take um, 
uh, Gauten uh, uh, Watson uh, distribution of zip type. So where QK are of zip type, right? This is a power law. The alpha has to be between one and, and two so that we do have the condition that we have infinite uh, second moment, right? But we should have a uh, finite as first more, uh, uh, not, yeah, uh, mm, finite first moment, actually, first moment uh, should be less or equal than one, well, in our case, equal to one, because we are done with subcritical ca cases, so in critical case. So that's why alpha has to be between one and two. Apparently, for all zip types, uh, the assumption works and s prime of one is equal to that limit in the lemma and both are equal to alpha minus one over alpha where alpha is the power from the uh, tail um, power law okay so uh, a lot of uh, measures satisfy this regularity assumption under which our main results hold so uh now let me introduce uh, the class of measures, single parameter class of uh, Galton-Watson measures that we call invariant Galton-Watson measures, and we have very good reason to call them so, um, because the the, the uh, multitude of affinities of uh, self similarities is just incredible about these measures. So uh, for a given a value Q, define. Uh, invariant Galton-Watson measures as Galton-Watson measures with uh, generating function Q of Z given here. Very simple uh, formula for the generating function. Notice uh, that uh, parameter Q has to be between one half and one. So um, you notice also you immediately see that Q is actually the uh, uh, the value of Q0, right? Because if, if you write Q of Z on the left and this on the right, uh, you obtain Q of zero by plugging in Z equal to zero on the left and on the right. And so you get Q0 equal to Q. Q1 is equal to zero as we wanted. Q2 is equal to one minus Q over two, two Q. Now, when Q is equal to one half, you stop there because then you're getting uh, critical binary Galton-Watson um, uh, measure for Q equal to one half. For Q uh, greater than one half, this is uh, the expression for Q sub K, which you can rewrite in terms of gamma functions this way. So for Q other than one half, uh, in, uh, uh, you have this Q sub K, which you notice is also of zip type, Okay, and so this invariant Galton Watson measures will turn out to uh, answer our question. So uh, recall the function s of v, s of z, uh, the assumption, assumption one. Recall uh, uh, what Horton prune invariance means. So our main invariance result says that if you consider a critical or subcritical Galton Watson measure with uh, Q1 equal to zero uh, that satisfies a uh, regularity assumption one, uh, then that measure should be uh, IGW of Q0, where Q0 is the Q0 in the probability mass function in, um, in your branching distribution. I'm sorry, let me get some water. So apparently under assumption one, IGW uh, Q measures are all the invariant measures. Our next result is the attractor property. It says, if you start with the Galton Watson measure rho zero, that is critical and has Q one equal to zero. And then if uh, you start uh, pruning the trees induced by that measure or forest of trees induced by that measure, then the attractor measure 
exists and the attractor is an IGW Q measure with uh, Q equal to, uh, well, one minus S prime of one, right? Where S prime of one, well, is obtained from the generating function Q of Z of measure rho zero, okay? And as we know from Birdway, Meyer and Wien, uh, result of 2000, that if um, in case of subcritical measure, then the attractor is known, is just the Galton Watson measure with Q0 equal to one. Now, if you roll back, what is Q0 equal to one or Q equal to one in here? Uh, Q, uh, uh, well, it, uh, I mean, Q0 equal to one corresponds to IGW Q where Q is equal to one. Uh, so it's also an attractor. It's the boundary point in the uh, range of uh, Qs in this one parameter family. So those were our main results. And uh, now let's apply them. For example, we know that uh, uh, zip type uh, distributions satisfy the um, um, the zip type distributions uh, satisfy the assumption, uh, the regularity assumption one, right? So, uh, in fact, if you if you start with a measure that is zip type and you uh, start pruning it, then it converges to an IGW uh, uh, Q uh, measure where Q is equal to one over alpha. Alpha is the parameter in, in, in the power law. Okay, and and uh, additionally, even in case of a finite, uh, now the, the zip can, uh, the zip uh, type was uh, infinite second moment. Now, in case of finite second moment, we also removed the assumption of finite branching that existed in the two thousand paper by Byrne et al. And uh, we just need a uh, finite second moment and that's it. And, and the attractor will be IGW one half, which is when we know when Q is equal to one half, we are dealing uh, with the critical binary Galton Watson as an attractor. So we completely classify uh, invariance and attractor properties of Galton Watson measures uh, under Horton pruning under assumption one. Now, we were given a gift uh, to us by a referee who noticed a measure that does not satisfy assumption one is also an invariant measure. And uh, it has this very interesting construct of Q sub M. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, and, and so, so it falls out of the theory, but it's very curious because our measures, IGW measures, you can write exactly the same way with an integral instead of the sum, but because of the summation of all um, integer numbers here, uh, we have um, uh, this a little bit of irregularity. So let me explain it on the picture. So this is S of Z. So what did uh, um, Invariance mean invariance meant that when you when we take, take iterations, you you take composite of s of s of s of s, so the same function over and over, right? Composite function. Then the way you play this ping pong by starting at zero, you get uh, this is sigma one, this is getting sigma two, and so on. The way you play it is that these points are all on the same line, right? And so uh, uh, apparently uh, it works for IGWQ measures because in that case, S of Z is just a linear function. Now, the, the measure that does not satisfy the regularity assumption is the one where the function S of Z is playing that ping pong. It, it may zigzag between these two points, but every time in between, uh, at the right time it appears, exactly at the point on the line, while uh, in between those, uh, those uh, different um, sigma one and sigma two, it actually may zigzag. So it doesn't have to be a straight line, but it has to uh, be 
exactly at the same points on the straight line uh, uh, at the right moment. So it's kind of like a very funny measure. Now, uh, our current work actually shows that this IGW uh, Q measures are also invariant under different other kinds of pruning, including uh, the uh, famous uh, ra tree erasure by Navu, um, when we introduce uh, edge lengths. So I want to see how much time do I have? Yes, I have only a few slides I could go over. Five minutes, five minutes. Five minutes, good. I, I don't see the time. I mean, you, you see what I see. And I, <laughs> so, okay, five minutes is good enough. So let's look at a more general case. Let's look at the space L of trees. They're also rooted, they're also reduced, but they also have edge lengths. So each tree is, um, is a metric space. So we still have empty tree consisting of roots. We have a length function. Uh, uh, now we, uh, so we have the distance, right? Because uh, every tree is equipped with the distance between the points on the tree. Uh, now we have the length function, which is the length of the tree is this, the total length of all of its edges. And we have the height function as another famous function there which is um, the height of a tree is the distance from the root to the furthest uh, leaf vertex away from the root, right? So uh, those, those functions play important role. Um, now, uh, another function important if you want to map from space L of trees with lengths to uh, space um, of uh, trees uh, without, uh, not equipped with lengths, which is T, then uh, the function shape uh, does it. It just uh, takes the combinatorial shape of a, a tree, uh, forgetting about the edge lengths. Okay. So now we consider uh, continuous Galton-Watson measures. Uh, well, essentially, the measures that you generate by a continuous process with uh, rates instead of probabilities, right? Uh, and so uh, you have um, uh, lambda, another parameter uh, which um, which uh, which is used for the um, sampling the edge lengths, which are IID parameter lambda edge lengths. So essentially you start with a shape tree, that is your just standard branching process. And then each edge in the tree is equipped with a length, which is um, an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. So uh, then there is uh, exponential critical binary uh, Galton Watson tree. Uh, is a critical binary Galton Watson tree with exponential um, edges, exponential edge lengths. Um, and in general, our class IGWQ can also be generalized by equipping them uh, with exponential uh, edge lengths with parameter lambda, IID edge lengths. Uh, so uh, then it now depends on two parameters, Q and lambda. So notice that if we plug in Q equal to one half, then we're going to get uh, exponential critical binary Galton Watson tree, all right, with parameter lambda for edge lengths. So this is our new space, extended space. In that space, uh, we have partial ordering. Uh, induced uh, um, uh, here by an isometry. Uh, so let me show uh, show how how the partial ordering is organized. So first of all, informally, if I'm comparing two trees, tree T1 and tree T2, uh, I say tree T2 is bigger than the tree T1 if I can take scissors and cut out um, 
extra pieces of um, tree T2 preserving the up-down orientation. So my tree becomes isomorphic to tree T1. In other words, uh, tree T2 is bigger than tree T1, right? T T2 is bigger than T1 if I have an isometry from T1 inside T2. So isometry is a map F uh, from T1 to T2 that preserves orientation, up and down orientation, and preserves the distances between the points. Okay. Another thing I'll need for the following definition is that the notation delta sub x t is that if you take any point x on this metric 3t and take all the descendant points of that point x, then they're also a tree with a new root at x, and that tree is denoted by delta x t. Okay? So, uh, this uh, will help us with the following definition. First of all, the isometry, as we already sa said, yields uh, a partial ordering, right? And uh, partial ordering, if we have partial ordering uh, between the trees, then we can have monotone functions with respect to that partial ordering. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, function phi is monotone non-decreasing if, well, phi of t1 is less or equal than phi of t2 whenever t1 is smaller than t2, and t1 and t2 being the trees. So, uh, now take a function phi. That function could be a height function or length function or a magnitude function or actually uh, could be the horton uh, stroller order of the tree. And then uh, the generalized pruning says, uh, give me time t and give me a function phi. Uh, then for any input uh, tree uh, from the space L of, uh, you know, um, metric trees, uh, the pruning of uh, the tree t uh, uh, this function phi consists of the root vertex plus all points x on the tree uh, such that um, the phi function of the uh, descendant tree exceeds t. Okay? So, in other words, it's a way of pruning uh, the uh, tree from the leaves down for different function phi is different. For example, if you take phi to be the height function, right? Uh, if you take uh, uh, it to be the height function, then you will um, you will uh, you will prune out everything, uh, all all the points on the tree that are um, that have depths from leaves down uh, not exceeding t, right? So you essentially you, you prune down uh, from each uh, leaf vertex down t units, just erasing everything. And that's what was uh, Navius tree erasure, okay? Now, um, we, of course, are interested in the prune invariance under this more generalized operation. I don't have time to go into what I brought here in the slide. Just we are interested in the prune invariance. Uh, until now, such invariance was shown only uh, for uh, the um, uh, critical, ex critical binary uh, Galton Watson trees for exponential, with exponential um, edge lengths. For example, when phi was the height function then in the celebrated work of Navu in 1996, it was proven that um, uh, the uh, critical binary Galton Watson trees are invariant, are prune invariant under this tree erasure procedure. Uh, say, if uh, you look at the 
phi of t being the length function, we show that the dynamics on the tree corresponds to 1D uh, continu continuum ballistic annihilation, and we show the invariance of um, Galton-Watson trees under, under this pruning. Uh, there are interesting uh, pr properties that are like semi-group properties satisfied when phi is equal to uh, the uh, uh, height function, but say is not satisfied when phi is the length function. So in general, uh, the result we've proven uh, about a few years ago was saying that critical binary Galton-Watson trees are prune invariant on the operation of generalized dynamical pruning as described here. And what happens to the parameter lambda? Lambda is uh, changing uh, in the following way. The new parameter becomes lambda times the probability of the tree surviving uh, under pruning. And so we have all the new parameters for different functions phi, but then now we extend it to the much bigger class than just critical binary and those are invariant uh, um, Galton Watson trees, that whole class of models. And here we have a new uh, dynamics and a new invariance results that are now being uh, drafted with, uh, again, with, in collaboration with Ilya Zalapin, but also with my student Guo Cheng So. Uh, one last comment is that uh, there is a similar um, similar uh, procedure to pruning, and it's called hereditary reduction by uh, Ducunet and Winkel, published in 2019. Uh, they're, um, they're, they concentrate on cases that seem to be only semi-group properties, but very interesting and very relevant, and in fact, some of our results spill on the hereditary property that they uh, they, they studied. Uh, of course, uh, so so this whole, the, what I presented is generalizing not all, only our results but the um, multiple other pruning results and in particular Navu, in particular um, Birdway, Meyer, and Wien, and others. So I'll I'll stop here. I think. I loaded it you with uh, too, too much, maybe uh, for just one time. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Do we have questions? Yeah. Yes. Can I start? Okay, yes, please. All right. Uh, um, let's see. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, if I uh, read correctly and heard correctly, your you, uh, you, you always start with um, with a Galton Watson tree, right? So, so uh, in this in this work, in this work, because we've proved various oh. similarities of uh, some other trees. So say we worked with Kingman coalescence and uh, oh, yeah. okay. So do you get uh, different uh, attractors in uh, invariant? Uh, we do, uh, we, we do uh, uh, but uh, uh, none of the attractors can be uh, classified so clearly, right, as for Galton Watson. We, we oh. have cases where, you know, as we prune, say, take Kingman Coalescence, and as you keep pruning, uh, uh, there, there, there will be attractors. We just don't know how to describe them. They, they are attractors, yeah. Um, so, um, so, all right. Yeah. Go ahead. So, yeah, I, I would have other questions, but perhaps someone else wants to. Okay. Thank you. So, if no one, perhaps I can ask one more, which is, uh, I mean, you start with. Um, so, so, perhaps this is stupid, but I, 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 I've been thinking I couldn't find them. The reason why uh, uh, the problem with starting with infinite uh, trees, I mean, uh, so, so yeah, so, I mean, it's like if you, you, you uh, a way of seeing this is just instead of uh, taking push forward measure, you just 
take a whole forest of trees induced by the same measure and then start pruning them. And uh, the trees that uh, disappear, you just don't count them anymore. And, oh. and then invariance means that the statistics of the trees stay the same. The frequency of trees say, that are eye-shaped stay uh, uh, converges to something. Uh, frequency of trees, um, or, or in the case of invariance, uh, it just stays the same. Y-shaped trees, all other trees, stays the same. Right. Oh. It, it's a way of um, it's a way of uh, e expressing that is uh, that st uh, statement of invariance. Uh, in terms of uh, um, forest, it, instead of push forward measure. Because the way we can just uh, define it dry is uh, mu is uh, uh, a given measure, nu is a push forward measure. And then we just conditioning on the non empty tree, then nu should match mu. But if we describe it, in uh, kind of, if you try to visualize it, then we it's the same as just saying we take measure mu and sample infinitely many trees with this measure and start uh, pruning them and look only in the trees that are non empty trees of the survivors. And then invariance means that uh, the distribution of the surviving trees the shapes of the surviving trees is the same as the original distribution mu. And the attractor means that if you start with a non-invariant measure and you sample the forest and, and start pruning and pruning and pruning and looking only at the survived, uh, at the, at the um, surviving trees, then it will converge uh, to uh, uh, that in, invariant measure. Okay. Can I ask some question? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, do you have some example of uh, Orton prune invariant uh, measure, but it's not generated by Galton Watson process? Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so um, Galton Watson invariant question. measure. <laughs> it's a good question. Um, so, first of all, um, there are other invariances that are weak invariances, and uh, there we, we've established those. Yeah. Um, uh, for, as I said, say, for some of the coalescent processes. Um, uh, now, of, of non um, uh, branching processes uh, in general, we uh, don't have the ones where we have the formula for the attractor or for the invariant, right? We, they only have the ones where we um, we've established invariants. Um, however, we have also other instruments of showing invariants uh, for, for for the measures. But yeah, I mean, how would you? It's very hard to describe a measure that is not coalescent or not Galton Watson. Uh, you can show its existence, but you cannot uh, say, well, here's the recipe, how it works. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's definitely true. Yeah. Not, okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one more question. <laughs> And um, I know that this area it's come from from geology, rivers, and some uh, yeah. something like uh, something yeah. like this. And uh, uh, do you have some uh, interpretation, practical interpretation for for the for the uh, Horton prune invariant measure in this sense for for the practice? Some oh, okay. Well, there are lots of uh, practical. Actually, that's why we wrote this this two hundred page survey. I I have it somewhere uh, listed. Mm -hmm. But look at probability surveys. That's twenty twenty. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but the thing is, uh, there there are there are uh, uh, some interesting interpretations. There. For example, if you take a a, a function, 
Uh, and take its level set three. Okay. And then interpolate the function through the minima. Mm -hmm. And look at the new uh, level set three. Okay. Then the new level set three is obtained from the old one uh, by just pruning, by pruning. Yes, sure. And uh, so Horton pruning uh, has direct interpretation with uh, taking, say, time series and uh, and and then of that time series, taking only the local minima and throwing mm -hmm. away everything else and getting b this being a new time series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then pruning more is that uh, you take minima of the minima of the minima, and of course it, it has it has a a time series um, and random functions uh, uh, component to it. And obviously, oftentimes you can say, yes, if I keep taking uh, minima, right? Uh, lo uh, local minima of local minima of local minima, I will converge and I know where I'm gonna, gonna converge. I just don't know how to describe that function. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Okay, uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Uh, so yeah, we we, we comp uh, compiled everything that was known to the moment about um, uh, about uh, different types of pruning and uh, different type of invariances. So the ones that we established here is the strongest one, distribu uh, distributional event essentially, but there are much much easier invariances uh, that, that are much more practical that are used in hydrology or in computer science. Mm -hmm. There's a big combinatorial component to it, too. Uh, we are now applying them in biology, but um, uh, working with somebody in NIH and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But it's a completely separate separate topic. There, there are more, I, I, I added more, like there's uh, this Horton and Tokunaga laws that are proved. And Horton law is, um, is the weakest form of that invariance. And so, we immediately we immediately established those other weaker invariances from the strong approach here. So uh, we never got to the say last slide uh, here. But the Horton law is something uh, that um, uh, people are looking into, as well as fractal dimensions and hex law. And actually, we we recently proved uh, uh, hex law from from this Horton self similarities and also mm -hmm. that. That's come actually. That's in submitted papers. Okay. In uh, uh, geophysics, we submitted few papers to geophysics journals. I and see that uh, we had some problems uh, with uh, uh, Alini <laughs> because because of uh, electric problems. Uh, uh, what happened? Uh, no. I, no, Alini, Alini, uh, uh, yes. Uh, how in English? Relampago, uh, see. Uh, um oh lightning lightning a uh, lightning okay yes yeah oh he has uh, she has no uh, uh electricity in home oh really yes uh oh. so uh so because probably i will <laughs> finish our our oh. seminar today ah, ah okay uh, yes uh, uh sorry uh if uh, uh so can I can I ask a, a final question before? Okay, okay. Absolutely, absolutely. okay I ask okay. as many questions as, as you would like to. I, yeah, no, I have time. Was that, um, I, I was. Uh, I mean, this concept of invariance that you that you uh, that you use. I mean, uh, all the people who work uh, in these kinds of questions use. I guess it, it uh -huh. is, uh, looks a bit like um, quasi stationary. Uh, it concept. is. Yeah. So, so is, yeah. there, is there any relation? There? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it has. Uh, yeah, it's 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 some kind of uh, some type of uh, yeah quasi stationarity of measures, right? And and but but under non-random dynamics because we are doing pruning, non-random pruning. Um, but yeah, it's it's very related to quasi stationarity, and it, for probabilist view, this is you know yeah. A type of uh, it also it also can be thought as as a shift uh, because we, we we reduce the tree so we essentially we, we shift uh, da uh, down to the root and we have various ways of quantifying it as a shift operator through uh, some um, merger statistics uh, 
uh, well, called Taikonavi sequences and etc. So it, ha it has relations to lots of things, uh, ergodic theory in particular, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, thank you guys. So I think we, uh, we finished our seminar today, but uh, Eugenia, I want to, to talk with you. <laughs> no. Okay, well, thank you all for attending my seminar. Please feel free to email me if you, if you have more questions or ideas and uh, I, would, I would love to talk and, and okay. yeah. Thank sure. you. Thank you, thank you again. Thank you, goodbye. Thanks, take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>